Welcome back to another MVP interview. I am here with God Legion from the Chiefs. God, what a fantastic week you have had. Congrats on being MVP and thank you so much for coming and chatting to me. Hey, mate. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a hectic week full of uh, surprises and unlucky performances. But, you know, it's, it's good to be MVP and, and be here and just kind of explain everything and just have a chat with you and, and the people. It's definitely uh, not every day that we get to chat to you. I know you don't do many of the interviews, so I'm really glad that we do have you on here. And you have actually been in the Rainbow Six Esports team for quite some time now. And stage one, you finally won your first championship. Could you explain your journey through Rainbow Six Esports, uh, becoming a player and becoming a pro? Sure. Uh, it's a bit of a, a long one with a lot of twists and turns. and It's crazy. Um, I started playing the games casually in 2016. I think it was year one, season three. Um, that's when I started playing, but I wasn't in a team. I mean, I was in like little teams with um, a few of my mates at the time, but kind of like the, the team that I'm on now, which back in the day was, <laughs> it's called Dominion, uh, which then went through a few uh, evolutions of rosters and names, which was uh, Anixian and the Oddity and you know, Elevate and whatnot. Um, I joined that in September of 2017, I believe it was, a few months before I finished school. And funnily enough, I've been a teammate with Vast for three and a half years, I think, if I'm correct, or gone on four this year. So that's, that's a long time. So yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could say, you know, I've been everywhere in a lot of teams, but I haven't. I've just kind of like stuck here and, and just dug in when things got bad and and, you know, marched on when things were going great. And, you know, last year was pretty rough for the team. We didn't, I mean, at the start was pretty good. I'm pretty sure we came second in uh, season 11. Uh, but after that, everything just kind of went downhill. We hit a slump. Um, but being able to, to come back uh, into this year to be stage one champion, uh, champions in OCN and then making playoffs in stage one, um, kind of, you know, it felt very like, redeeming from all the hard work that we've put in and the roster changes that we made. Um, some of them are harder than others. Um, and yeah, just kind of great to see everything kind of um, coming together. So it's been a, an exciting journey. Yeah, and a long one at that, like you said. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that you started playing uh, comp while you were still in school. Now, you actually moved here from the UK, right? And uh, mm -hmm. since then, you just got into the Rainbow Six scene. Oh, what was that like? Um, I mean, it was a long time ago I moved. I was six when I moved, but um, it's weird because I never thought I'd go pro in Siege. I always thought it would have been CS because I played that in high school with all my mates. Um, and I always thought, you know, that was what I wanted to do in that game, but just it's weird how it just kind of led me here and you know, here I am in a, you know, I guess, foreign country uh, that I do call home now. I am uh, an Aussie citizen, so. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy how life works and where it takes you. It's, it's interesting and exciting. Yeah, and look, you've made a lot of funny friends along the way. We all saw mm. Digital's uh, flamethrower <laughs> stunt in Playday 7. Did anyone put him up to that? Um, or is he the kind of guy that would just burn his house down for a bit of a laugh? Look, in, in private, he used to do it a lot, but I'm pretty sure we told him to stop just because like how, you know, risky it is. Um, I think... He said something about it on the night, but I'm not sure. But I, when we won, I, I, I didn't even hear him do it until we turned on the stream, and you know, he's just a pyromaniac. Just got it, got it ripping. But yeah, he's that's just that rain fear. He's in that case. Yeah, I, yeah, I, we can definitely attest to that, having spoken <laughs> to him, having seen him on the face cam. Um, one of the most stunning plays that we've seen in all of Stage 2 of OCN was your insane 1v4 against Bliss. Diffuser planted, your last teammate dies, and you're all alone. How do you win that? Uh, I don't know. It's like I knew where two of them were. So two of the four, I knew where they were. Todd was, he ran out front and Shade was uh, rotating out outside of VIP to service door. So I, I knew it too were, and the third one was on the kit. So it was the fourth that was really kind of like unaccounted for. But I thought he's got to be on the kit, you know, protecting him. So I just thought, you know, hatch is open, kill Todd, it's easy kill, you know, he's just coming in. 
and go, you know, go through private. I was, I was worried that I didn't have enough time. And I think looking back on it, there was, well, like 0 0.4, 0 0.3 seconds, maybe even less. It was very close. Um, I just thought I got to go for it. I, I thought I'm going to go for Warbang, but I didn't really know where he would have been. So I risked shooting through the bars, which uh, is a bit risky, especially from my experience with shooting through bars. Um, but luckily it worked out. I got the the, the double uh, on, on the two of the kit. And then obviously the, the fourth at that point was Shade coming into service, so I knew where he was. Um, and, you know, just kind of prepared myself for the gunfight because I knew it was inevitable. Um, and, you know, skill prevailed and yep. closed it out. Certainly did. What was the energy like after you clutched that? Um, and how did that set the tone for the rest of the game? Uh, at that point, did you just know that you were on fire and you weren't going to lose it from there? Um, <laughs> I was just like, I'm pretty sure I was just saying, what are they doing? Like, I, I, it was just crazy. Like, I, <laughs> the energy was just, it was high, you know, as, as it is when you just casually won before. Um, I was more confused, like, how did they just let that happen kind of thing. But I mean, it, it does happen no matter what team you're on. Um, but it kind of just, you know, it put me down this track of just hyper confidence, just being able to take any fight. Um, and, you know, I think later on in the game, almost closing out another one before. Um, would have been crazy if I got that too, huh? Two one before in the, in the game. But um, yeah, no, the, the energy, after that was kind of like, I feel like we knew at that point, no matter what, you know, uh, man difference it is, we, we still kind of like have the experience and the advantage. So yeah, we kind of just went on playing our game and really just kind of took it to them. Yeah, oh, it was an amazing game from you and it wasn't just that round. Um, there's no doubt that your mum is your biggest fan on Twitter. <laughs> she has R6 entry fragger role in uh, in her Twitter bio, and we've seen your dad cheer for you before on broadcast. Uh, how does your family support you in your esports stream, and what does that mean to you? Um, well, it's unfortunate my dad can't watch because he works nights, so I usually message him after the game, but when my mom's not working, and she wasn't on Friday, um, she usually got on the TV in the room behind me, and... My my twin watched it as well, and my eldest sister came up because she was going to drop me off to my mates after. And so, pretty much, almost all the family was watching it behind me. And yeah, it was it's you know they support me. At first, you know, the region that we're in, it was you know a bit kind of tough to to you know support. Not tough, but like okay, you got this as a hobby and go for another thing like uni or whatever, but. Just over like the past year and a half where things have kind of, you know, progressively gotten better and, you know, they've become more supportive of me. Um, especially my mom. <laughs> you know, she's on Twitter everywhere. She's always in the chat, always watching. So yeah, I love her. I love the support. Yeah, uh, it's just so wholesome to watch every single time. I know that your mom's one of the most popular members of the local mm -hmm. uh, Rainbow Six esports community. Um, so in the playoffs bracket, you've got Rufflecopter, Knights, and Order behind you. Uh, who do you see making their way into your match, and who do you see as your biggest threat? Ooh, um, damn, I, I like I think anyone could beat anyone. I mean, Ruffle, like Stage One Ruffle, especially. You know, they were they're on fire, and you know, they just, they played a close game with us as well. Um, so, you know, maybe, oh, actually I have no doubt that they could be at order. I mean, they've, I'm pretty sure they did it in regular season, wasn't it, OT and Cafe? Um, beat them in the past, I think in the last playoffs. So it's very doable for them. Um, Knights, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I think we can all say that they're saving straps for Mexico. So I'm sure they're going into this weekend just planning to have fun, which is totally understandable. Um, but I mean, you know, if they want to turn the Jets on, I could definitely see us versus Knights, you know, without a doubt. Um, but Order, I would say right now, out of the three, are probably wanting to win this weekend the most out of those three. So I could definitely see us versus Order more, more than likely. I guess that's just as a testament to how close OCN is, hey? The fact that any of these three teams you could mm. see potentially, you know, turning on the Jets, as you say. Uh, in stage one, you took down the Knights despite them being 
a higher seeded and getting uh, straight into that grand final. You smashed your way through that penultimate game and then took the championship. This time it is Bliss who's in that spot, not the Knights. And Bliss was undefeated until you smashed them in Play Day 7. Do you think that you can repeat that feat and get the championship against them once again? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think Rain put it perfectly in the interview. Um, we definitely have the better map advantage in the best of five. Um, there's, def there's maps that they just can't hide and can't ban, they have to play them. And I think whether they scrim them or not, um, if they don't scrim them, a week's time definitely isn't enough to kind of be at the level you need to be to versus in some of these maps. So I would say definitely in the best of five, we're the more comfortable and experienced team. Um, on top of that, the pressure, like Bliss now know what it's like to lose. They know the feeling um, and it could fuel them for sure. Um, and I hope it does. I do really want a close game. I always like, you know, hard games. Um, it's very uh, just enjoyable to be a part of. Um, but it's it's tough because, you know, best of five, grand final, OCN titles on the line. It's a lot of pressure, especially for a team that has never made a grand final fire pool. So um, I definitely think pressure and nerves are going to be a part of their, you know, uh, mindset and how they you know go into it uh, but for us i mean we've been here before you know we've we've done all the hard work before in stage one beating ruffle and then beating knights um we know what it's like we know how to prep for it we know how to you know conserve our energy throughout the whole game and just you know play our game at the end of the day it's a best of five you know and the prep that goes into best of five it's a lot harder because i'm pretty sure we all know that bliss in a best of one format it all favors them they can just focus one map and I think that's why they did so good. Um, and I'm not taking away from them. It is a you know an almost flawless season. Um, it's still hard to do even in a best of one or a best of three. Um, but I do think in a best of five they definitely can't do their regular training or prep or like what um, prep regime. They have to spice it up. And how they're going to do that, I don't know. But I'm I'm hoping for a yeah, close game. Of course, even if you know, let's hope order don't make it. <laughs> so it's us. I think order could you know. Close it out as well. Um, wow. But it for sure, like, like, despite coming in second seed, you, you do see yourselves as the favorites. I do, I do. Uh, we've beat the Oli Sims, you know, uh, nine, uh, order, sorry. Um, we know how to play against them, especially after the unfortunate South APAC loss. We reviewed that and we now know like, hey, we know how we're gonna go into this game or the future games with them. Um, and a best of three also gives you kind of like, uh, what, like an extra life in case you mess up on the first map. Okay, we can go into the second or third, knowing what we want to do and how we want to play it. Um, so I definitely think with the order game, we have the advantage. Um, even, you know, Bliss, again, we know how they play. We beat them quite comfortably, I would say. Um, and not, not, you know, there wasn't a point in game where we thought, oh, we're going to lose or we're going you know, to back foot. So I, I would say we're very confident going into this game. Of course, respectful. We're going to prep for each team as we would any other day. Um, but I would still say experience kind of prevails in these sort of situations. You sound very much cool, calm and collected. And maybe we'll be chatting to you again after the playoffs happens, if you do manage to get that playoffs MVP. But that's just about it we've got for today. Thank you so much, God Legion. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you, mate. It was a pleasure. And I'm hoping to be here next week for the playoffs MVP. That's the plan. Uh, you know, definitely want to get the second one back to back. So, yep, no one's done it before. Maybe you could be the first, but that's all. Mm. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.